say uh, uh, many thanks to Warren Hine. As being a member of Pyra for all these years, uh, Warren has given us unprecedented support through all the years that, that had been Pyra, a big part of the AAPT, and we really appreciate that. And also uh, Howard Voss, who passed on. He was a, a, a big help at the beginning of Pyra, when it all started up. So with that, we have all the Pyra members ready to give a 21 balloon salute to Warren Hine, Howard Voss. Four, three, two, one. So tonight, the Physics and Performance Demo Show goes to the Physics of Vaudeville. Starting us off tonight will be Portland's own, Mr. Reese Thomas of Jubilania. Blah, 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 blah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here. You know, I was thinking about starting the show by simply spinning a ball and balancing it on my finger using gyroscopic stability to keep it on my finger. I was just going to start with that trick. But then it occurred to me. It occurred to me that life is short. So why not take a risk? Why not also attempt to spin a ring on my arm at the same time that I spin the ball? Spinning the ring using centripetal force, <laughs> of course. And you know, more and more people are suffering from a lack of science education, present company excluded. <laughs> So why not also juggle two balls of unequal mass in my left hand to show off my understanding of gravity? And, because I just had a double short latte and a Pepsi, I will also be spinning a ring on my right leg to boot. I mean, why not? What's the worst that could happen? I could end up looking like a fool. Too late. I'm counting on you to respond appropriately. I'm counting on you to put the odd back into audience. <laughs> it's showtime. <laughs> well, what do you think, Stan? I was just wondering, though, you know, we're doing this vaudeville physics. We want them to be able to find the physics. So maybe you could do a little bit of a regular, more of your vaudeville routine. And sometimes it's good to have some audience participation within those routines. And then they can try to find the physics themselves yeah. and justify my presence. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking I'd give you a choice. Do you want a trick involving celery or a trick involving a meat cleaver. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll do this democratically, which means we'll have a little vote, 30% of you will take part. <laughs> All in favor of celery by applause. Okay. Uh, it's good the vegans have enough energy to clap. <laughs> Reform the Electoral College. <laughs> Given the choice between good, healthy roughage and potential violence, you have chosen potential violence. You are my audience. You get what you deserve. You want a meat cleaver trick? I give you a meat cleaver trick. Prepare for fear. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you don't find this frightening? Think of it from the ball's point of view. I tell you want a more dangerous trick, but I fear you want it only to be more dangerous to the juggler. No, 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 no. I need a volunteer. <laughs> Stalwart, expendable volunteer. <laughs> Mr. Sokoloff, are you still busy out there? David, David, are you, could, you, could you help out for just a sec? Just, I understand you're willing to help on any project. Come on up here. Paying me by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to survive. He's our next 
Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, then I'll need somebody. No, I'm <laughs> so if you can stand right there, that's perfectly fine. Do you have stress in your life? You don't? Oh, let's get you some. <laughs> this is a trick called the stress trick. In the stress trick, I juggle two juggling balls and a meat cleaver. While I do this, I cut up celery. All you have to do as a representative of the audience is hold the celery. <laughs> behind your back. <laughs> or like this, it's entirely up to you. <laughs> Again, hold really still, because I'm not that good. <laughs> Stress trick. You are really stable, man. You make a good president. Ah, he knows what's coming. <laughs> Alright, but still, I think maybe we should take safety measures. I have a nice, high-quality helmet. It ought to make things a lot safer. <laughs> You should wear it. Definitely. Oh, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> Clumsy Power Ranger look. <laughs> All right, here we go. Don't worry, you won't lose face. <laughs> Stress trick. This is so cool. I've always wanted to try this. <laughs> Stress. <laughs> Very, very still. Don't worry, I've never been hurt doing this. <laughs> Stress trick. Stress trick. Whoa. Stress trick trick. <laughs> Only seven more to go, dude. <laughs> Stress trick. <laughs> Stress. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Don't you hate that? All the wind up, you know? None of that. Yeah, <laughs> you are doing good though, really. Look at yourself. You're doing good. <laughs> and I feel good too. I can do it with one eye closed. I am alpha male. I, oh. <laughs> I am alpha, alpha male. <laughs> Stress. <laughs> you ready for the last one? The last one is the hardest one of all. The last one is lengthwise. <laughs> Gravity is a persistent force that plagues many of us in the vaudeville industry. There we go. Up. Good boy. Stay. Very good. Constant acceleration. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We had a couple of different things there. We had objects of different mass, you know, of, uh, going falling at the same rate, right? And we were ignoring friction there. Uh, we can do that. We have the celery pickup trick here, which is also uh, a. <laughs> It's so great, that's usually my job. This is fantastic. Okay, um, uh, the, other, the other one was impulse, right? Hitting the celery. Impulse, you could say impulse. But what happens if we uh, don't ignore air friction? What kind of vaudevillian can do something where we don't ignore air friction? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rob Brown. Heard that? <laughs>
you know, in physics demonstrations, we always like to control the variables. That's our job, to, to make it look good. We have to get rid of all the other variables in the universe to make that one thing look good. We also know that spinning an object can make it perform in interesting ways. So think of spinning objects and controlling variables while witnessing the talents of Kurt Carlisle from The Kurt Show. juggling that involve rotation around center mass and all sorts of uh, other, you know, esoteric things. And, like, check this out. This is a new style of juggling called tennis balls and can. <laughs> Which is really stupid, because it could be called cannonballs. <laughs> <laughs> it looks remarkably like this when done. <laughs> I love juggling. I would marry juggling if we were in Massachusetts. <laughs> I think that juggling looks like art. 
But then I also think that the moon looks bigger than Jupiter. <laughs> Is the moon bigger than Jupiter? Yes. Is juggling art? Well, it's all a matter of perspective. I tried to teach my grandmother how to juggle, but she grew up during the Great Depression and she can't throw anything away. <laughs> Some of the hardest tricks require only one ball. These are not those tricks. <laughs> These tricks would be a lot easier if I had three arms. But will they fund stem cell research? <laughs> They say that one sign of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. They say that one sign of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. They say that one sign of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting it to turn out differently. In juggling, that's not called insanity. That's called practice. <laughs> you know, now I understand why so many faculty members uh, seem to be uh, worried that people would think they were insane. They, they never want to practice the demos before class. <laughs> I notice the pirate people are the ones that are laughing about it. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, for this next, next act, I want you to uh, think about a ball on a string. Or, or think about a mass on a string that's a fruit to slide on a string. But there's some friction. And then you can think about the friction, you can think about normal forces and how you increase normal forces to stop the mass from sliding on the string. You can think about drawing free body diagrams of a mass on string. Or you could sit back and relax and watch Kyoko Uchida.
Yeah, I'm This reminds me of a demonstration. Could you come on and just stand up for just a minute? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. A physics demonstration that's very common. Okay. Uh, I see I need a, a volunteer from the audience here. Um, uh, Dale Steely, where are you? Dale, you can come up here and give me a hand, Dale? No? <laughs> no, no way. No, Dale, we can't get Dale. Yeah, where's Dale William? Dave, you're a ham. Where is he? He's not? Yeah, come on up here. All right. I think I have to call him a ham for pirates. Okay, so what I need you to do is to sort of get like to be like a sort of a ball shape, uh, somewhere about you know, this high off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> then, of course, I can. Um, I need you to stand about about right here. Okay. <laughs> Come back up some more. Okay. Whatever you do, David, come on. And whatever you do, don't flinch and don't move and keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> oh yeah. Good <laughs> you. I'd like to uh, strike the stage here a little bit. We had uh, the performer performing earlier, Mr. Rob Brown. Rob Brown actually is a moonlighting optical engineer. So he's used to kind of hanging out with us. Uh, with you guys having an okay time tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so we'd like to bring Mr. Rob Brown back out, please. Rob?
Sir. I just wanted to thank all of the physics teachers for giving me an education so I don't have to work as hard as everybody else on this stage. <laughs> It was all there. It was just all there. Boy, people, there's all this balloon litter on the stage. Okay, Reese is coming back now with something here. You know, in 2005, uh, I was able to team up with Reese Thomas to do uh, shows for the World Year of Physics 2005. That's how we got together doing Science Circus because we both had shows called Science Circus. We can't figure out which one is supposed to be Science Circus and which one's supposed to be Circus Science. Um, we still haven't figured that out. We're having our lawyers work on it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, besides all the wonderful juggling and all the, uh, um, and all the physics, obvious physics and that, we did some modeling of physics also. Yeah, we did a little work on the catalog. You know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other modeling. Other modeling. Other modeling. One of the modeling was, uh, had to do with the photoelectric effect. I forgot my spin up sign. Oh, you need your spin up sign? I gotta get my spin up sign. Oh, uh, this is so well, 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 important to prop, 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 of the prop, audience. Prop. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Okay, so one thing was a photoelectric effect, which you have all that, uh, not balls, but electrons, electrons. And uh, there's gonna be photons hitting the electrons to try to free them up. And different photons in different colors have different energy. So first we needed a spinning electron of spin one half. One half? One half spin. And that's a spin up electron. Yeah, that was the problem. Anyway, <laughs> so now the spinning electron, uh, we can start hitting it with photons. We try to hit it with a red photon. Ready, set, red photon. Oh, didn't do anything, right? We can hit it with a blue photon. Oh, yes. Nothing happened in there. Green photon. Yeah. How about the violet photon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the violent photon. <laughs> we also did juggling of knives doing special relativity on a full race across the cart, on the cart of the stage. You approach the speed of light. Things got shorter as you were. Oh, you should have seen it. It was very odd. Silly script theory was proved. Yeah. <laughs> Another one that I actually liked um, that Stan and I came up with was uh, a little inertia demonstration using these boxes. These are uh, plain wooden boxes, but they're currently in disco phase. <laughs> and uh, we were looking at this old juggling book, and it had a woodcut from the 17th century of a Japanese juggler. And we looked at what he would appear to be doing, and, and we thought, oh, inertia demo. Check it out. He had these nine boxes, right? And if you lift them up, they go up. And if you stop lifting them, gravity pulls them down. They go up and down. But if an outside force acts upon the lower horizontal box, it goes over and the others resist change of motion. An excellent example of inertia, unless it's your veins. <laughs> now, this is kind of an interesting thing because it seems this Japanese performer was a prisoner in a prison and he started playing with these blocks they used as pillows. And he got so good that he showed off for the warden and the warden took him to perform for the governor and the governor took him to perform for the prince and the prince took him to perform for the king and the king set him free. It's the only success story in all of juggling. <laughs> A grown man picking up after himself. <laughs> I want feminine sort of applause there. <laughs> My other favorite example of inertia juggling involves this apparatus here. You know, inertia means something moving, wants to keep moving, something still, tries to stay still. On this table there are many things that are still. The question is, will they stay still? When I pull the tablecloth, out from under them. Well, of course, they will try to stay still. But inertia also means something moving wants to keep moving, and I have a glass bowl here. I place it on... I <laughs> max out the microphone with the bowl. I place it on a pole, and it's not very stable. But if I get it spinning, it becomes much more stable. Gyroscopic stability, conservation of angular momentum, gravity pulling it down, balance. The rim of the bowl is pushing inward against the pole, a centripetal force. And once moving, it tries to keep moving. That's inertia. 
What I'm curious about is whether inertia can keep nine glass bowls spinning on nine poles and keep these things still as I pull the tablecloth out from under them. <laughs> Remember, if there are any kids in the audience, many of these tricks you can try at home. <laughs> So far, so what? No. <laughs> Don't worry, these aren't my balls. <laughs> Not really, seriously, I've worked this out on the computer. <laughs> I got a new editing program called Broken Windows. <laughs> Slowing down faster than they should. I think they're out of tune. Shoehorn, shoehorn, I think they're out of tune. Could you check them, please? Thanks, thanks. A little bowl movement. <laughs> don't explain it if you don't get it, all right? These last four are not smaller. They're just further away. <laughs> Play balance in the center of mass, and um, well, I don't think you've ever seen balance in the center of mass done quite this way to this degree, and it's only going to happen because you're in Portland, Oregon. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, show you here, and you can be, see a well balanced performer, Brittany Walsh of Do Jump Movement.
Walk coming tonight. David and Christine, where are you? Can you come up on stage, please, and take a bow? Come on out, please. She wants to take a bow to the Union. There's Christine. I see one. Come on out. Can you walk around? Get up here, please. They do have some snacks. I know, take this energy, take this joy, and head on over there. And David Sokoloff, 910. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much.